President Biden has a pretty amazing, unprecedented record on job creation. Gas prices are ticking up after a 99-day fall because of OPEC, Saudi Arabia, Ukraine, not because of him. So what is he, what are Democrats supposed to do to win people over on the economy? Republicans have the lead on this issue. It might be unfair. Huh. That's right. Is there anything Democrats Maybe. can do to change that? Well, it's not a question of being unfair. It's totally absurd. <laughs> you have a Republican Party who on every single issue impacting working families is on the wrong side. And yet what polls yes. show is that people think that Republicans are going to do better jobs for them than Democrats. So what we have got to do is, A, of course, deal with the abortion issue. What the Supreme Court did is totally outrageous. Of course, we have to go after Republicans. We're trying to undermine our democracy that people fought and died to preserve. But what we have got to do is take the attack to Republicans on the economy. Don't be on the defensive. You got 60 percent of the people in this country who are living paycheck to paycheck. Millions are working for starvation wages. I introduced legislation for a $15 an hour minimum wage. I got zero Republicans. Right. We're the only major yeah. country on earth not to have paid family and medical leave. We need at least 12 weeks. Zero Republicans <laughs> support that. Only major country not to have universal health care. No Republicans support that. At yeah. a time of massive income and wealth inequality, the American people want billionaires to start paying their fair share of taxes. No Republicans support that. So what I am saying is you got to go on the offensive. These people are yes. phonies. They are corporate, you and know, working for corporations. We have got to take the fight to them. Let's do that. Hello. He is so right. Bernie is so right. It is unbelievably uh, uh, trackable how Republicans are never for the middle class. Never. Not any of their policies serve or service or help or aid or lift up or even include the middle class. None of their plans, none of their legislation, none of their ideas include the middle class. Why? What did Donald Trump accomplish? He accomplished, uh, you know, taking our wealth and redistributing it to the top 1% of this country. He allowed for corporations to have a lower corporate tax rate than they already had, and then uh, actually allowed them to do stock buybacks with the saved money. Here we are in an in in inflationary spiral that is due to Donald Trump deciding that COVID was a hoax, even though it was rampaging across the globe and it was causing supply chain failures. He talks a great deal about America first, America first, but it is Joe Biden that actually puts America first and Americans first. That's what the CHIPS bill is. The CHIPS bill is saying, hey, screw the reliance on foreign countries, on foreign governments, on communist governments for our supply of uh, wafer chips, for our supply of uh, microchips. Let's make them here. Let's actually invest here. Let's open up a, you know, a microchip factory in uh, freaking Ohio. Let's turn the Rust Belt into a, uh, a joke and make what was uh, uh, the industrial heartland of America beat again. Let's do that. And passes it, passes it with no Republican votes. Then he tried to do Build Back Better. Build Back Better included a lot of things, a lot of things for families, families in this country who are truly living paycheck to pay. 60% of America lives paycheck to paycheck. That's pathetic, that's sad, and that is absolutely unconscionable in the world's richest nation on the planet. But what do they do about that fact? Do they say, hey, when gouging occurs as we come through the pandemic and we know that we have some supply chain issues when uh, profits for big oil, when profits for big ag are in the hundreds of billions of dollars. And instead of cutting costs for the American family as a thank you, or uh, they actually gouge some more, they gouge some more. The Democrats say, you know, that just feels wrong. That looks wrong. That sounds wrong. And it's very, very, very uncomfortable for ordinary Americans who are paying the price for their supply chain failures. So what if we actually slapped a windfall profits tax on those companies so that they would not be incentivized to gouge? 
not a Republican is for it. But let's go back to the family, uh, you know, ideas that were put on the table that actually were rejected already uh, in the Build Back Better plan, right? So we had a child tax credit. What was that? It was a $300 a month check per child to help people get through a horrible pandemic. Well, all of a sudden, the Republicans are against it, and uh, they're not giving us the 60 votes. They're, they're not going to do it. So we don't have a child tax credit anymore to help ordinary middle class families, okay? We said, hey, let's do a uh, universal pre-K s- uh, scenario. I mean, you're anti-abortion, uh, so be pro-child. Incentivize people to think or understand that they could afford to have children in this country. Give them paid family leave once the child is born, universal pre-K once the child is two or three. Uh, You know, let's uh, do uh, universal health care so that they know that their kids can go to a pediatrician for their vaccines. Let's do something like that. Let's include dental care so that kids can get their cavities filled. Mom and dad can get their cavities filled. Mom and dad don't have to lose their freaking teeth as they age. No, they're against that. They're against that too. I mean, it it, it is just so unbelievable. You you know, then we said, all right, could we just raise the corporate tax rate a tad, a touch, just just a little bit? Well, what do you have in mind? Well, let's do a 15% minimum tax for very profitable corporations. They wouldn't vote for that either. But we were able to get that into a reconciliation bill because it dealt with tax. And tax issues can be dealt with in reconciliation bills. And so we only needed a bare majority. We needed the 51, and we had the 51, and we got the 51. And so now there's a minimum obligation for the most profitable companies to pay a minimum 15% tax. And they're against that too. So tell me, how are they good on the economy? How are they good on that? They're not. It's a ruse. It's a lie. And you know what? Dems cannot ignore this. They cannot surrender this issue. When the American people, in poll after poll, think that the economy, think that inflation are the two major issues, you cannot ignore those issues. Right. And in fact, not only should we not ignore those issues, we should make it clear to working families throughout this country many of whom who are prepared to vote Republican, that if they vote Republican, they're voting for a party which is on every single major issue economically is against their interests. Yep. That's the fight that we have to make. And let me repeat again. I think that Supreme Court decision on abortion is a total outrage. This is an issue we yeah. must continue to stay focused so- on. The overwhelming majority of the American people understand that it is a woman who has the right to control her body, not state government. So I'm not suggesting we don't focus on that issue, but I'm suggesting get on the offensive on economics as well. 